Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 5 of Let's Make a Motherfucking Game. I'm your host, Bob Barker, reminding you to keep your pets spayed and neutered. Real talk, I don't want to make this video. I haven't been feeling it. That's why the videos haven't been coming out at a regular clip these days, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been uh, I've been coding up a storm and having fun making the actual engine, but the, the videos, the actual explanation part, is uh, it's kind of bumming me out. I guess the thing is, is, I like I like to talk about technical topics. I like to introduce something like a new a new programming construct or a new piece of uh, mathematics or something like that, some kind of API bullshit. That's what I like to talk about. And this is not that. This is just stuff that we need to do. Administrative bullshit for the engine. For the game. And so, yeah, I don't know. I just don't... I don't want to do it. But the, the truth of the matter is, is that in a game, when you're making a game, the parts, the hardest parts, the parts that take the most effort, that require the most thought, aren't going to be the stuff about interfacing with an API or even like the, the algorithms or the math. It's, it's going to be the organization and the architecture of the, uh, the system. It's the, uh, the data structures and the, the interrelationships, the interactions between all the stuff in your thing. That's the part that, that's the part that tr is going to trip you up in the end. That's the part that's going to take a project and bring it crashing down to its knees because of, you know, spaghetti code and just too much, too many intertangled interrelationships and dependencies and it gets to the point where you just can't add anything new to the project. It's too hard or you get a bug and you just, you can't fix it because it's just a tangled mess of bullshit. So... I don't know. This stuff is it's kind of important to look at, I guess, and to see and to show. But it's not that fun to talk about, and I imagine it's not super entertaining to watch. So what I'm going to do, I mean, the whole the whole reason for making this series for me is as a vehicle to introduce some fun topics like uh well, I mean, fun in quotation marks here. Uh, I guess it depends on your definition of fun, but my definition of fun, because I'm a big nerd, is, uh, like, multi-threading, uh, synchronization of, between threads and memory access, threading stuff, basically, is interesting to me, and, I don't know, other topics, like, uh, I wanted to show how to make a bloom effect, and other bullshit that I've forgotten at the moment, but that's the stuff I want to do. And in order to get to that point, because I also want to make like a complete, well, semi-complete game thing. A thing that you can actually see. That's it, that's a game. That isn't just a, a demo. That's an actual sort of game thing type deal. So in order to do that, I've got to go through all the steps. And that includes this stuff. But I think I'm going to, for these topics that I'm not really introducing new concepts... I'm just going to kind of fast forward through the explanation. I'm not going to go super in-depth. And if you want more in-depth, if you have questions, you can always come to me on the forums and I or someone else who knows what the hell they're talking about will answer your questions. If you want to know why I made a certain choice, we can have a discussion, uh, an architectural choice, I mean, in the, in the engine. We can have a discussion. You can tell me your ideas. That'd be cool. If you don't care, that's cool too. But I'm going to try to spend less time in the videos where I'm not introducing any kind of, you know, new technology, so to speak. So, that was just a little blah blah blah. Now let's get to the let's get to the cha cha cha. That rhymed. Uh so yeah, tracking. What what the fuck is tracking? Well, in uh, for the, the purposes of this video, tracking is well. That's not what I wanted. 
that is what I wanted. So tracking is tracking a ship as it travels around uh, our course uh, for the purposes of determining whether it has completed a lap or not. So how would you do that? Well, simple solution for our purposes would be to create a, uh, a region here. You can make it a polyline region and you could use the, uh, the collision code that we already have to determine whether you know, a ship has touched this line here. And whenever it touches the line, that means that we have a, uh, a lap. And that's fine, that's a good idea. It won't work, because people will uh, scum the shit out of that. They're going to be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to go this way, and then go back, and then forth, and back and forth. And there's, you've got a super bad exploit there, and it's not going to work. That's not going to jive. So that's the first idea. It's not going to cut the mustard. So you say, okay, Chile, I got this one. We're going to make two regions here. And we're going to make a little bit of logic so that you have to go, you have to touch this one and then this one, and then you get a lap. Then you have to go back here. Here, you gotta, you've got to do them in sequence. One, two, one, two, one, two. And that's fine. That'll work. But it it still allows the user to do something stupid like go here and then come back. And again, you have a problem. It's not as bad of a problem. They still have to travel the same distance, but they can avoid half of your track. So if there's one half of the track that's more difficult than the other, that's obviously going to give someone a good incentive to scum it the fuck out. So, not good. You could add more regions. And again... That makes it better. They'd have to go all the way here and then come back. So that would be 1.5 times the distance. Probably not going to be a very good uh, thing to do from the point of view of, you know, gaining an advantage. So this would deter, you know, players from scumming it out in order to gain some kind of unfair advantage. However, I mean, it's still not a good solution. You could still technically not complete a lap and still get a lap. And I am not happy with that. So what did I do? What did you do? What I did... Wait, I didn't want to delete that. Give it back. There we go. So what I did was I made, it, I made a system where you track the user as they hit a new region. So call the region... When they hit a region, that region becomes the current region. And when they hit the, the region after the current region, if this is, for example, quickly. Quickly now, Chile. We don't got all day. This is one, two, three, four. The current region is two. And then the next region they hit is three. Then the current region becomes three. And... When they hit 4, the current region then becomes 4. And so on and so forth. That's the normal uh, order of the universe. And let's say current region is 4 and they hit 1. Well, then lap plus plus, you get a lap. And current becomes 1 again and so on and so forth. Now, what happens if they go in the opposite direction? Let's say... Let's say current is at 1, and they go back to here. They're like, oh shit, I'm going to get me, oh baby, a triple. I'm going to get me another lap here. I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to go back. No, motherfucker, because the only way that you can continue on is if you hit this one. If you go in the opposite direction, what happens is you're detected, okay, Basically, there's three cases. You touch, you're touching the current one. That's fine. Nothing happens. You just haven't moved that far yet since you've hit that one. You touch the new one, in which case we, uh, we move forward in our targeting. Or you touch anything but the current one and the next one. In which case, you're going the wrong way, motherfucker. And in that case, 
the system just basically locks out until you go back to the last one you gained. So if this is current, you go in the wrong direction, you hit this one, now you're going the wrong way, nothing you touch will have any effect until you touch this one, which was the last one that you correctly achieved. And when you touch this one, then the system goes back into a normal mode and you can again, you know, proceed along the predetermined route. And that is how we solve the problem. Now, from an architecture point of view, this is how I went about that. So you've got ship, and the ship is going to contain a track sequencer. And the track sequencer is going to contain the logic of determining whether you're going in the proper direction, whether you are hitting the regions in their uh, preordained sequence. Now, the regions are going to be contained inside a track region manager. That's going to hold all the regions and manage those regions. And the track regions are going to be derived from polyclosed. Now, how this is going to work is polyclosed in its, uh, what is it, the test collision function or the handle collision function, member function, uh, it's going to have configurable behavior. So when a collision is actually occurs, it's not going to be hard-coded what happens. And the child, the class that derives from polyclosed, is going to uh, define the virtual function or override a virtual function that will give the definition of what happens when a collision happens. So for the track here, the walls, right? For the walls, what happens is the ship will rebound. But for track region, what happens is it's going to send a tracking message to ship, which passes it on to the sequencer, which determines whether you're going in the right direction, whether you have completed a lap, etc. Okay. So what's the code? What does the code look like? Uh, well, like, as usual, you go to, uh, sync, ugh, and then you go branches, and you go tracking, create branch. All right, let's take a look at what I actually changed here. Very quickly. Very quickly. Where the fuck? Mm, here it is. View history. All right, because I fucked up some bullshit with uh, committing changes and shit, you don't get to see the uh, the branch thing here for shield. But the last thing we did in shield was here. So this is the first thing in the tracking branch. Even though it doesn't look like it. Don't worry about it. I fucked up some bullshit and I'm not good at GitHub or Git. So I couldn't fix it. It's not a big deal. Alright, so the first thing I did was I made polyclosed collision behavior virtual. This is that thing I was talking about where instead of hard coding the behavior as rebound, I make it call handle collision, which is a pure virtual function. So in the polyclosed uh, class, it's not d determined yet what happens when a collision occurs. And I create a new class called polyclosed rebounding, and this is just a class for walls and bullshit like that. And it defines that when a collision happens and we handle the collision, shit should rebound. And to change map, make it use... Uh, where is it? Here it is. Make it use polyclosed rebounding. Because polyclosed now is a virtual class, right? It has a function that has not been uh, properly defined. So we do that. That's just paving the way for future changes. Here, basically just some uh, cosmetic changes. I changed the name from Handle Collision to Test because Handle is what happens when things actually bump into each other. And again, change the name here. Here, I uh, changed this from Polyclosed to Polyclosed Rebounding. There's no need to have Pointer to the Derived class because we're only holding, or Pointer to the Base because we're only holding a Derived here. So, might as well point to the more specific... Uh, thing. Even though this works fine, there's nothing wrong with this, it just, if there's no reason for it, I might as well point to the, uh, the more specific thing. 
So yeah, I changed that. Here I just added a pragma in the header file because here I removed color from polyclosed because we're not using polyclosed really as a graphic element. We don't need to store color. Uh, we'll let whatever is using, if, if we're going to use polyclosed as a graphical element, we'll let whatever is uh, containing it to hold the color. And we won't, we won't store the color in polyclosed. So what happens is if we want to draw polyclosed, we just have to pass the color in when we call get drawable. Not a big deal, just some OCD bullshit that I wanted to do. Here's where all the fun happens. So here we got tracking system enabled, implemented. Whatever. All right. So this is just that, what I just showed you here. This is this system, more or less. So what do we have? Well, track region inherits from polyclosed, just like I said. And in handle collision, it calls track and it passes a unique identifier. So every track region has its own unique identifier, which is an integer. And that is how what's used, it's basically the name of the region, is its serial number, if you will. So when we collide with a ship, which is a collidable circle, we call track on the ship. And if we go here, uh, wait, no, shut up. Oh, I can't do that. Never mind. So we go to ship. And what do we get? Track region calls seek.hitregion. So seek is a track sequencer. And that's a new class that I uh, declare inside of ship. And the track sequencer, like I said, it just... Um, contains logic for determining whether we're going in the right direction and whether we have made a lap. And that's all this stuff does. That stuff that I explained with the diagram, that's what this is. I'm not going to go over it line by line because it's it's kind of complicated. If you really want to know, you can look over it yourself and try to figure it out. It's not super hard, but com explaining it actually takes more time than I thought. So I'm not going to waste time and video length explaining this bullshit. If you really want to know, you can look at it yourself, and if you still don't get it, you can ask me, but uh, I don't think we need to waste time talking about it. So, hit region is how the ship passes the, uh, the tracking message onto the sequence, the track sequencer. And the track sequencer handles the situation uh, accordingly, uh, making, keeping track of your progression around the track whether you're going in the wrong direction, and if it determines that you have completed a lap, it calls notify. Because track sequencer is derived from observable, so anyone who is observing track sequencer can get notification when a lap has been completed. And this is what uh, triggers that notification. Uh, just some other bullshit. The way it works is uh, all the regions are integers, and they have to be continued contiguous and current region starts off at zero and then every time you hit a new region it checks to see if, if it's zero the next one has to be one and if it's not one then you fucked up and in two three four five until you reach n regions and then it loops back around to zero so it puts a limitation on your tracks they all have the uh the tracking regions, they all have to have uh, IDs that are in ascending order, contiguous ascending order. All right. Uh, polyclosed rebounding, just bullshit. Bullshit. That's all there is. Track region manager just holds all of the track regions in a vector. And it has an add region function here. You can add new regions. And every time you add a new region, it has to sort it. Because it wants to keep them in order. Even though actually keeping them in order doesn't matter in this implementation. But forget about that. I just, I thought it had to be in order, but it didn't. Anyways, another important part of the situ situation here is the map. Because the regions are stored uh, in... 
the DXF file with all the other data. And the way I store it is I put them as polylines and I put them all on separate layers. And the name of the layer is how I uh, attach the ID to the region. So TR means it's a tracking region. And then the number after is the ID of the tracking region. And so by using the layer name, I can add, you know, parameters to my geometry. And in here, I read that shit out. So when I'm finishing a polyline, I check to see the name. Is it an inner boundary, outer boundary? No. Is it, does it start with TR? That's what this substring does. Is the first two characters TR? If they are, then I'm going to add region using the vertices that have been uh, read out. And for the unique ID, I get the, uh, the string, the layer name. I take the characters after, so the third character to the end, substring two means third character to the end of the string, and convert that to an integer. And there's my ID. Capiche? And that is basically all I want to talk about. One more thing <clears throat> that tripped me up and that made me have to change some things is Track Region Manager holds uh, track regions as a vector. And I want to sort those regions. Well, it happens that if you want to sort a vector of objects, those objects have to be assignable. They have to have a uh, either the default copy assignment operator or you have to define a copy or move assignment operator for the object. And the funny thing is, let me just go to uh, polyclosed, which is what track region uh, derives from. My original polyclosed had constant float this and constant float that. And if you make a member constant, you can't have an assignment operator, at least not a default one. And it's also hard to make one non-default because you can't take an existing object and reassign another value to it because that means you have to assign another value to these constants. But they're constants. You're not allowed to assign to those. So you're all fucked. You're fucked if you want to use constant members in, an, in a class whose object is going to be contained in a vector which has to be sorted. Because the sort algorithm, it's shuffling things around inside the vector. So it's copying one part to another part and copying this one to there and swapping them in and out and so on and so forth. So if you, if you, do, if you don't have assignment operators, you can't do that shit. So I had to lose my const, but never fear, my OCD will prevail in the end because I changed the way that I do uh, the tracking. So in this one, I'm tracking basically with an integer value. There's not a lot of connection between uh, the track sequencer and the actual uh, track region manager. It's just assuming that all the, uh, the regions are going from 0 to uh, n regions minus 1. I don't like that. I like things to be a little tighter. I like, I like it tight. I, it's, I can't lie. So what I did was I went into ship here. And I changed it from integers to iterators. So now it... Uh, instead of just incrementing it integers, it actually has iterators that are linked to the container here. And it iterates through the container. And I changed the container from a vector to a set. Because a set, when you insert into a set, shit gets automatically inserted in order. So it's sorted. And it doesn't use, uh, I don't know how it's implemented, but it's implemented in such a way that it doesn't need an assignment operator. So because I don't need that assignment operator, now my OCD can go crazy. And in polyclosed, you see, I put those cons back in there just to spite. I don't need them, but I put them in there just to fucking spite C++. However, uh, I've also been changing my mind about 
making members of a class constant because not being able to uh, create assignment operators seems to be a problem if you want to work with the uh, standard template library. I don't usually use the assignment operators uh, in my own code that I write from scratch because the idea doesn't make sense to assign to objects like a polyclosed. It's a thing, it gets, it, it gets created and then it doesn't change and then it dies. It's, very, it's a very static um, piece of data in memory, an object. But the STL treats everything like a, like a value. It's, very ba it's heavily based on value semantics. So if you want to use the STL and you want to put your objects into STL containers, you have to basically make them uh, able to cooperate with value semantics, which means you must be able to work with uh, assignment operators. So while I did not give, give in this time, I'm thinking in the future I'm probably going to have to give up on consting members, even though I like it for many reasons. It's just, uh, I don't know, I, you can't give up the STL because it's just really good. So, anyways, that's my rant about that. So, I made, uh, I changed it from, where is it? I changed it, fuck you! I said, where is it? Here it is. Changed from integers to uh, iterators. And this stuff changes here too, but it's still the same. And you still have to use IDs to uh, compare regions to each other. But for the, for figuring out which region is the next target region, iterator. And a poly close, that's just that bullshit that I talked about before. And some bullshit that I don't need to talk about because it's not that important. And that's that. So, last thing. Added a class in-game called the Death Listener. Wait. I guess I should talk about something that I didn't talk about. Let's go back to tracking system implemented. We'll go to game dot H. So, before, never mind. I added a, uh, we have game, and it's listening for the death of the ship. So we can only really listen to one thing, because it's, if we make game an observer, it can only observe one event. If it observes two different events at the same time, and one triggers, you don't know which one has triggered. So, uh, an observer can really only listen to one type of event in general. So I created a separate class to listen for the lap event, call it lap listener, you know, derive from observer, give it an on notify override, give it an accessor to check the lap count and an, a value to keep track of the lap count. And then in game, we register that with the, the ship and register lap observer will register this with the uh, sequence manager of whatever it's called. I forget. The sequence thing. And then at the end here we just draw a uh, draw string to draw the lap number you know, on the screen. So that's what I did there. Why am I telling you that now? Because I decided we might as well do the same thing for game. It doesn't make a lot of sense to make game just especially listen to the death of one ship. So I created a uh, a dedicated listener class called the Death Listener, which sounds r mildly gothic or whatever, but whatever, you know. It's all good. Death Listener listens to the death of the ship. So we go game.cpp, and here we go. So ship.addobserver, Death Listener, and ship register lap observer for lap listener. And then, you know, in your game logic, you just go, uh, you know, death listener dot is dead to check if we're dead. And that's that. That's everything that you ever need to know about this update. Not really, but all the important stuff, I hope. And this is what it looks like. If you notice on the top right hand of the screen, we've got our, uh, we've got our lap count. And if I can manage to do this without dying... This is really embarrassing. Okay, I think I got it. I got it, I got it. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, and yeah, okay, so I got I got one lap. And if I go this way, and then I try to go back, see if I can do this. Oh, just don't fucking die. 
No, fuck you. Well, you have to take my word for it, but you can't cheese the system. You have to make a complete lap around it. Otherwise, you won't get credit. So it works. And everything is happy. I'm happy. I'm happy that i am done this video. And I'm happy that it didn't take an hour long. So next video, uh, what are we going to do? I forget. But, oh yeah, I don't forget. It's going to be black holes. We're going we're gonna, to uh, upgrade the physics system to uh, handle black holes and bullshit. So that's good. That'll be a little interesting. But again, I'm hoping to go, I'm hoping to run through it quickly. Don't want to take up a bunch of time. I want to get through all of this organization, administration type coding and getting into interesting topics that we can all have a big circle jerk over. Sounds good? I thought you'd like it. So, that's that. That's this, uh, this episode. If you liked it, Go ahead, click the like button. It's very, uh, it's very motivating for me. And if you want to, you know, if you have questions about the content here, or you have an ideas or of ways you think it might have been done better, you want to have a discussion, you come down to the website and we can have a good old talk about it. But until the next episode, I'm Chili. Later.